from DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com, I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News. Snortable chocolate powder? It's now available in the U.S. Why? Well, your guess is as good as mine. Phil Collins says he's drinking again, despite previously saying that alcohol was killing him. Collins, who is currently on his Not Dead Yet tour, insists he can now control his boozing and is capable of enjoying a couple of glasses of wine. Okay, people, I'm not dead yet, but I may be on my way, so get your tickets now! An MIT researcher was arrested on federal charges of insider trading. Prosecutors say the man Googled how SEC detect unusual trade before he bought numerous stocks and options that netted him around $120,000 in illicit profits. The man also searched for phrases such as insider trading in an international account. Okay, you know, if you're going to do something illegal, you might want to erase your browser history. A British study conducted by researchers at Warwick University shows that receiving a promotion might pad your wallet, but it also could be bad for your mental health leading to more stress, anxiety, and depression that you're too busy to properly treat. Well, yeah, maybe, but you know what? I, I, I'm willing to risk it. A giant iceberg about the size of Delaware that had been under scientists' watch has broken off from an ice shelf on the Antarctic Peninsula and is now adrift in the Weddell Sea. So everybody, time to panic! It'll float here in about 80 years, at which point it will have already melted and no longer be newsworthy. Everybody run! Researchers in Scotland say that when dogs listen to music, they seem happiest when listening to reggae or soft rock. That, that's, that's strange. I mean, I would have guessed that they would like who let the dogs out. Australia's Dean Stinson apparently has the bar set pretty low, calling it the greatest moment of my life. Stinson thought it would be fun to check has his only baggage on a Qantas airline flight from Melbourne to Perth a single can of Emu Export beer. Yep, he was thrilled to see it arrive safely, saying, "...there she was, alone on the carousel, proudly making her way around. It was perfection." <laughs> well, according to the BBC, Stinson has become a hero to beer drinkers with this stunt. He says that he and a buddy who work at the airport were trying to figure out the oddest thing that they could successfully check in as luggage. And while it did work this time, Qantas doesn't want to suddenly see a frat party worth of beer in its luggage compartments. A spokesperson said, "...this guy's done it, he's won the internet for the day, so we're happy to move on." During his recent arrest for public drunkenness, Shia LaBeouf told a black police officer that he's going to hell because of his skin color. And thus ends the career of Shia LaBeouf. Some places, maybe your state, have taxed sugary drinks like soda and sports drinks. In France, it's now illegal to sell unlimited soft drinks at a fixed price or offer them unlimited for free. All right, okay, fine. All right, well, then sell the soft drink and then all refills are only a penny each. There you go, problem solved. Macy's is going to try Black Fridays in July to boost sales, which I know sounds crazy, uh, until you realize that that's about the time Walmart starts putting out the Christmas decorations. If you've been feeling a little under the weather lately but you can't figure out what's wrong, maybe you just need an old woman to lick your eyeball. Yep, over in Bosnia, 80-year-old Hava Celebic, or Nana Hava as she is known to locals in her village, has supposedly cured 5,000 people using the unusual technique and claims to be the only person in the world who possesses this ability to heal with her tongue. She charges 10 euros, that's about $11 here in the U.S., for the procedure in which she uses her tongue to remove pieces of lead, iron, coal, sawdust, and glass from eyeballs after sterilizing her mouth with alcohol. Uh, you know, it, it sounds to me like maybe she likes to sterilize her mouth with alcohol even when by herself. A lot. A new study finds that the Americans are far behind the rest of the world in getting enough steps each day. As a result, health advocates are advising designers of shopping malls to place their stores farther apart. MSNBC host Joe Scarborough has announced he's leaving the Republican Party, to which the entire world responded, Wait, MSNBC hired a Republican? You love doing things on Facebook? Well, guess what? 
in reality, it's making you blue. A Harvard University study found that the internet networking site and other social media are major contributors to career anxiety. In fact, the researchers declare it's actually making us miserable. Now, ironically, Mark Zuckerberg created Facebook while attending Harvard, but the Boston University researchers say the website creates an online culture of competition and comparison. It steals away our time and prevents us from forming close relationships. And a comparable study at Stanford University reveals that many users have more negative experiences on social sites and overestimate exactly how much fun other people who use them are actually having. Facebook is making us unhappy by making everybody else look really, really happy," says Harvard study spearhead Daniel Gulati. Uh, so how can you avoid these Facebook traps? Well, experts advise setting a designated time to go online instead of checking in on your personal page throughout the day, and to build closer and more rewarding relationships. Meet with your real-world friends for a meal or drinks instead of just posting messages online. Hey, if you want to read this story for yourself or share it with a friend, I have posted it to my Facebook page. Well, that makes five times now that Nancy Pelosi has called President Trump President Bush. Is there not a time during Alzheimer's where you just need to get out of the public eye? A Washington state man is being charged with sending a bomb along with one of his fingers to the IRS. Yeah, uh, this guy definitely needs to be locked up. But you got to admit, we've all wanted to give the IRS one of our fingers. A report says that the super-rich are buying nuclear-safe bunkers in Kansas to survive an apocalyptic event. Now, all right, well, unless you're planning on moving to Kansas, how does this help you? I mean, if you're one of the ultra-rich in, say, Los Angeles, and nuclear war breaks out, well, you're not going to be able to make your way to the breadbasket of the country, right? I mean, you'll likely be charred remains while complete strangers are already living in Kansas, and they'll take comfort in knowing that you unknowingly built them a nuclear-safe bunker. An Australian man had his big toe transplanted in place of a lost thumb. And it works fine, but his hands keep getting athlete's foot. An arbitrator has ruled that American runner Gil Roberts, who won a gold medal at the 2016 Summer Olympics in Rio, met his burden of proof to show kissing his girlfriend caused him to fail a drug test. On Friday, Scooby Axon of Sports Illustrated noted Roberts said he was frequently and passionately kissed by his girlfriend in the days before the test and she'd been taking a sinus infection medicine, which he said caused the failed test. Are you all, forget the, 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 the drug test thing. Who names their kid Scooby Axon? Tall conservative columnist Ann Coulter got annoyed Saturday after Delta Airlines bounced her from the reserved Comfort Plus seat, which comes with three additional inches of legroom, and gave it to another passenger. Coulter went on a two-hour tweeting tirade that had another Twitter user who was clearly not a fan of the columnist writing, "'Ann Coulter is having a bad day, which makes my day better. Thanks, Delta!' It could have been worse, though, Anne. You could have been flying United and been reaccommodated with a bloody nose and a concussion. Your research seems to indicate Ravens can plan ahead. Baltimore Ravens, for example, are already planning not to make the playoffs. Wildlife experts in Alaska say that humpback whales have learned that they can get a great meal if they hang around a salmon hatchery the day hatchlings are released. It's kind of like me out in the mornings waiting for the donut shop to open. The source of the honey coming from a ceiling of a New York woman's apartment was 35,000 bees inside the wall. The story is all the buzz over the internet. Some people are expressing fears that Amazon is getting too big. Those same people are getting messages from their computer that their thinking is wrong. Cooking schools may soon be a thing of the past. Enrollment in culinary institutes across the country is in serious decline, and some cooking schools have announced they're closing. So what's to blame? Well, high tuitions, low student aid, more restaurant positions that provide on-the-job training, and a demanding millennial workforce. Although I'm sure watching Gordon Ramsay scream at all the chefs he comes across probably isn't a big selling point either. Police in Germany are searching for thieves who now possess enough cleaning products to have sparkling clean urinals for life. A truck driver parked his vehicle in a lot and went to catch some sleep. 
When he checked his truck early the next morning, he found that the back door to the cargo area was open. Someone stole six pallets of urinal cakes, 500 cases in all, worth thousands of dollars. My, my true hope is that, that the crooks are just so dumb they think the urinal cakes are actual cakes and try to consume them. Mmm, minty! The Samsung Galaxy Note 8 will be unveiled next month. However, they are avoiding using the phrase, hot off the presses. Authorities say more than 400 pounds of marijuana has been found in 15 new cars made in Mexico and shipped to Ohio and Pennsylvania to sell. Gee, I wonder what the Mexico to America currency exchange rate is for that. If you want to boost your creativity, paint the walls of your office blue. If you want to enhance your memory, immerse yourself in red. A study from the University of British Columbia concludes that the best color to boost our ability to think creatively is blue. In addition, it found that red is the most effective at enhancing our attention to detail, findings that could have major implications for advertising and interior design. The study results found that red boosted performance on detail-oriented tasks such as memory retrieval and proofreading by as much as 31 percent compared to the color blue. For creative tasks, such as brainstorming, blue environmental cues prompted participants to produce twice as many creative outputs as when under the red color condition. So, all right, so what color do you paint the walls to keep you from falling asleep at the office? Well, whatever color that is, that's what I need. A new poll finds President Trump has the lowest approval rating in history for a president after six months in office. But enough about what the media thinks of him. New York City is launching a $32 million plan with the hopes of reducing the city's rat population. First up, removing Bill de Blasio. A mall in China has introduced husband storage facilities for wives to leave their spouses while they shop. I love this idea. The mall has erected a number of glass pods for wives to leave any disgruntled husbands that don't want to be dragged around. Inside each individual pod is a chair, monitor, computer, and gamepad, and men can sit and play retro 1990s games. You know, suddenly now, going shopping with my wife doesn't sound like it'd be all that torturous. Who uses Facebook the most? The most active Facebook users are people who post almost nothing. Call them the lurkers. Although they rarely update their own status, the quiet ones stay logged on to Facebook longer than anyone else reading their friends' posts and looking at their friends' photos. Facebook calls them lurkers. The rest of society calls them stalkers. Surgeons found no less than 27 contact lenses stuck in a woman's eye while preparing her for cataract surgery. The lenses, which resembled a bluish mass in the 67-year-old patient's eye, were causing the woman discomfort that she simply attributed to dry eye and old age. Rupal Morjaria, a specialist trainee ophthalmologist who dealt with the case near Birmingham, England, told Optometry Today, "...none of us have ever seen this before. It was such a large mass. All the contact lenses were stuck together. We were really surprised that the patient didn't notice it because it would cause quite a lot of irritation while it was sitting there." The patient said she'd been wearing monthly disposable contact lenses for 35 years but did not attend regular appointments. So, just a heads up, if you wear monthly disposable contact lenses, you're supposed to remove them and dispose of them before putting new contacts in. Hence the term disposable. A study has found that the fat in food doesn't have to be swallowed to have a negative effect on the body. So, if you hear a woman say, if I just look at that piece of cheesecake, it goes right to my hips, uh, she ain't lying. Nine out of ten people who apply to be contestants on game shows are rejected. Man, <laughs> that is a frightening thought. We're seeing the cream of the crop. <laughs> when a Texas couple got engaged at a Garth Brooks concert in Oklahoma City recently, Garth gave them a wedding present. He's going to pay for their honeymoon. You know, Although I would be wary of taking this gift. I mean, what kind of honeymoon are you going to get when the guy has friends in low places? NBC's long-running reality show The Biggest Loser has been canceled. The news comes as a shock to most of America who thought the show went away years ago. Disney's new Star Wars-themed land will be called Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and will open in Disneyland and Disney World in two years. 
It'll be tough to get reservations, though, as you'll need to make them a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Amazon is said to be close to rolling out its own messaging app. Because of course they are. They're Amazon. Next, it'll be uh, an Amazon pacemaker, uh, followed by Amazon tongue studs. The world's largest Ferris wheel is being built in Dubai at more than 600 feet tall. Look, Mom! I can see the sewage treatment plant from here! A woman taking a selfie at an L.A. art gallery fell and knocked over some exhibits, causing $200,000 in damage. But she did look fabulous on Facebook, so you know it all evens out. National bridal dress chain Andre Angelo has suddenly closed after 80 years, leaving some brides without dresses that they had already paid for. Have these people never heard about a woman scorned? Caitlyn Jenner is said to be weighing a run for the U.S. Senate. Okay, I I'm confused here. I mean, Caitlyn Jenner might run for Senate. Uh, Kid Rock, he's debating doing the same thing. There's talk of Dwayne The Rock Johnson running for president. We got a game show host that is the president. Did I somehow slip into an alternate dimension a few months ago? Samsung has unveiled a 34-foot LED TV screen because apparently you needed one. Six cars were stolen from people's driveways on the same night in the Connecticut town of Greenwich. All six cars were unlocked with the keys inside where they were taken from home Saturday night. Left unlocked with the keys inside. Okay, I'm not going to say that you were asking for it, but you were asking for it. It sucks when the internet goes down. It can be life-altering when it goes down for three weeks. After more than three weeks, Somalia's internet has finally returned. It's estimated it costs the country about $10 million per day. Officials and internet providers attributed this problem to a commercial ship that they said cut an undersea cable. Man, three weeks without the internet, I would be rolled up in a ball in a dark corner of the basement drooling over myself, repeatedly mumbling, the world is gone, the world is gone, the world is gone. Beloved children's character Winnie the Pooh has reportedly been blacklisted in China following comparisons between the pot-bellied bear and China's president. Yep, these are the totally rational folks we want brokering a deal between us and the North Koreans. Pocket-sized flamethrowers are being marketed to women in China as an anti-pervert weapon. The handheld devices, which are capable of hurling a stream of fire about two feet long, sell for up to $40. The many flamethrowers have sparked controversy in China. One newspaper wrote, of course perverts are scary, but what's even more scary are these anti-pervert devices. Man, you know, even if you know the woman, I would not want to sneak up on her and startle her. In fact, I would rule out surprise parties, too. Scientists say that 70 years after the U.S. tested nuclear bomb after nuclear bomb on land in the Pacific known as Bikini Atoll, the wildlife there is actually remarkably well. It's doing well. It's flourishing. The only difference they have noticed, though, is that the animals are a bit larger and often desire to attack Tokyo. A Virginia Beach, Virginia woman is accused of arson after investigators say she purposely set a potted plant on fire. The charge is a Class 3 felony, which means the 29-year-old could go to jail for anywhere from 5 to 20 years if convicted. Man, somebody needs to tell this lady that setting a potted plant on fire, that is not the same as smoking pot. Okay, now this is just hilarious. Or sad, I guess. It depends on what side of the political aisle you're on. A new Bloomberg poll, it shows Hillary Clinton is viewed less favorably than President Trump, despite Trump's historically low approval ratings. <laughs> So maybe you don't get those pantsuits dry-cleaned for the 2020 campaign just yet, Hill. A study says many U.S. children suffer lower back pain. You know, I used to tell my mom that. That's why I couldn't clean my room, but she never bought it. In Northern California, Judge Michael S. Williams has lost his job because apparently he could not resist the urge to swipe two Art Deco-style business card holders from a judge's dinner in San Francisco. The Commission on Judicial Performances censured Williams, and he agreed to resign effective December. Williams was attending a dinner hosted by a Matrimonial Lawyers Association in March 2016 when he took two cardholders in the Art Deco decor of the City Club of San Francisco. They were each worth about $30 to $50. 
The commission says Williams returned the cardholders after being informed that he was caught on video. So the judge expressed remorse, said he had an unexplainable impulse to take the cardholders. So a judge's career destroyed over the theft of something less than a hundred bucks. You know, if you can't be trusted with the small things, how can you be trusted with the big things? Speaking about calls from all sides to cut down or out his use of social media, President Trump argues, they want to take my voice away. Trump claims, it's my voice, they want to take away my voice, they're not going to take away my social media. And my MTV, I want my MTV. San Francisco school officials have banned chocolate milk because they say it contains too much sugar. They're also banning sugary soft drinks, non-sugarless gum, and Def Leppard's Pour Some Sugar On Me just to cover all the bases. Researchers have found that an all-corn diet can quite literally turn a female hamster into a deranged cannibal. A new study found that the European hamster, which once used to feed on a varied diet of grains, roots, and insects, is not doing so well on a diet limited to industrial-grown corn. The study notes that the hamster species is on the verge of extinction in Western Europe. The all-maize regimen has turned the burrowing critters into deranged cannibals that eat their own offspring. D do you see what you're risking here by going vegetarian or vegan? You might be the beginning of the zombie cannibalistic apocalypse. New research seems to indicate that Tyrannosaurus rex couldn't run. And they were extremely poor dancers. Sometimes a price increase is so steep it must be criminal. A woman in Australia called police to report that her drug dealer was asking way too much for marijuana. The woman told police she was completely offended at the outrageous price hike. What an, what an idiot! Calling the cops for pricey pot? No, that is a call for the Better Business Bureau. A melting glacier in the Swiss Alps has given up the bodies of a couple that went missing 70 years ago. The ice preserved them as they were when they disappeared all those years ago. Scientists are baffled, though, as to why one of them looks like Brendan Fraser. A new study says that people in Seattle spend 58 hours a year parking their cars. You know, I'm guessing that number doubles during Christmas shopping season. America's bacon reserves are currently at a 50-year low. On the plus side, our cholesterol levels are looking a heck of a lot better. Heidi Montag says she has gained 25 pounds during the first six months of her pregnancy. Uh, you know, I hate to break it to you, Heidi, but chances are you're not carrying a 25-pound baby. Some of that extra weight is you. Lifetime is going to debut a new show next week where they show blind dates live. Obviously not a true reality show, because nobody in their right mind is going to want cameras watching their first date with somebody when everything you do is already being judged by the person you're hoping will be the one. A team of engineering students from UC San Diego is on a quest to discover whether the moon provides the necessary conditions to brew beer. Wait, 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 is there something wrong with brewing beer on Earth here somehow? I mean, what? Are we going to have beer shortages unless we're able to start brewing in space? Why didn't somebody warn us about this? All right, excuse me, I have got to go stock up on some Guinness. A New Mexico man is facing charges after police say he threatened to pull a gun on a taco shop employee for giving him the wrong order. Bullets, Taco Bell, you know, neither one's good for your health. Our phones and various other devices are causing poor posture as users are spending one to three hours each day hunched over their phones, and that's leading to back and spine problems. We're actually turning into a society of mindless walkers. How long before we start craving brains? Donnie Wahlberg painted forward recently to a waitress at a North Carolina Waffle House. The New Kids on the Block star left a $2,000 tip on an $82 bill at the Waffle House in Charlotte. Wahlberg wrote on Facebook, My mom waited tables, and my dad tended bar for years, so when I walk into a Waffle House and the staff treats me like a, ki like a king, you better believe I treat them like queens. I I'm sure he meant that better than it came out, though. John Mellencamp's son, Speck, was arrested for public intoxication and fighting in Indiana on Saturday night. He fights authority, but authority always wins. The marital bed, once a symbol of holy matrimony, may someday be a relic of the past. Nearly 25 percent of married couples in the United States now sleep in separate beds, according to the National Sleep Foundation. 
Separate sleeping arrangements are so popular that the National Association of Home Builders says it expects 60% of custom homes to have dual master bedrooms by this year. Barbara Tober, the former chairwoman of the Museum of Arts and Design, told the New York Times recently that not, when, not that we don't love each other, but at a certain point you just want to have your own room. Well, well, yeah, I mean, with the snoring, the hogging of the covers, the cold feet, the passing of gas, of course you'd want to get away from that. And, and that's just talking about the family dog. Former middleweight boxing champion Jermaine Taylor has been arrested after allegedly biting a woman's arm and face and threatening to kill her. Well, of course he's a former boxing champion. Now he can't even beat up a girl without biting her. Two adult men drowned in the Ngwazi River in Africa while they were being baptized. Victory Christian Center pastor Samuel Kamingwa later said, following the incident, we've agreed on some measures that will ensure the safety of our followers during baptism in the rivers. Kamingwa added that churches were considering increasing the number of ministers at baptisms. They'd also only baptize one person at a time, while others are kept at a safe distance and will choose a time when the water is calm enough for the ritual. Last year, six children died during an early morning baptism in a stream, and in January 2015, two elderly Pentecostal church pastors drowned in a river in South Africa where they had gone to baptize four junior church members. This is truly a sad story, but do these people not realize you can baptize other places? Like swimming pools, big bathtubs, a pond? A woman trying to smuggle electronics into China was caught. She had 102 smartphones and 15 luxury watches strapped to her body. Airport security first became suspicious when she said, I'll be back in an Austrian accent. As their wives and girlfriends know all too well, guys like to make a big fuss when they're feeling under the weather. And <laughs> don't we all? Well, now scientists are saying that man flu may not be a myth and that guys really do get illnesses worse than gals. It's all because women have a more powerful immune system than men thanks to their hormones. Now, I don't know if this is actually true, but I am certainly going to claim it the next time I get the sniffles. Finland has set the world record for the largest group of skinny dippers. 789 people went swimming naked for five minutes. Now, if you're thinking about breaking the record, there you go. 789 people swimming naked for five minutes. Although there is speculation that half of those swimmers were just director Michael Moore taking a beach vacation. An Israeli student whose grandparents survived the Holocaust has admitted to stealing items from the Auschwitz death camp for an art project. Rodem Bides visited the former Nazi Germany camp in Poland several times and removed items, including a sign forbidding people from taking anything. But perhaps most ironic of all, she says she did it to fight Holocaust deniers. The Auschwitz uh, Birkenau Museum called the acts outrageous and demanded the objects return. More than a million people, mostly Jews, were killed at Auschwitz during World War II. The objects from Auschwitz, which also include shards of glass, small bowls, a metal screw, and soil, they formed part of the 27-year-old's final project. Perhaps even more outrageous, Vide's supervisor at, Bur at uh, Biteboro College, the Israeli artist Michael Naman, said that she did not see anything wrong with what Vides had done, adding, the way I see it, she succeeds in creating a unique encounter between art and an event that has passed and has been wrapped in a lot of words, symbols, and representations. So apparently Israeli colleges don't have ethics classes. Rosie O'Donnell has created an uproar by promoting an online game where players can push Donald Trump off a cliff. Somewhere, Kathy Griffin is saying, Thank you, Rosie. Police in suburban Cleveland say a fast food restaurant customer, angry about the way his sandwich tasted and looked, threatened to shoot somebody over it. Police say the 20-year-old man complained that the egg on his sandwich at a Steak and Shake was runny and slimy and looked like spit. You know the best way to ensure that you will get spit on your sandwich? Threaten the staff with a gun, saying it looks like spit is in your sandwich. Trust me, you are not going to want what comes back to you in that sandwich. Grapes and the wine made from them can help protect your skin from sun damage. According to researchers at the University of Barcelona, the flavonoids in grapes can stop the chemical reaction that causes skin to die. Says biochemist Maria Cascante, who directed the study, 
This supports the idea of using these products to protect the skin from cell damage and death caused by solar radiation. This works because if you drink enough wine, you just have zero desire to leave the house. A flood has destroyed all the cash in a safe at Fox River State Bank in Wisconsin. So you name the bank after a river, your bank is located right on the bank of said river, and you're surprised you get flood damage? A woman in Taiwan divorced her husband after he kept ignoring her text messages. You know, I'm having a hard time seeing who the winner is in this story – the woman who got away from her apathetic husband or the husband who got away from the woman who wouldn't stop texting him a hundred times a day. The study suggests that sleepwalking is apparently a surprisingly common phenomenon in American households. Scientists from Stanford University's School of Medicine found that about 3.6 percent of U.S. adults are prone to sleepwalking, which is a higher proportion than previously thought. Nocturnal wandering is also tied to certain psychiatric conditions such as depression, anxiety, and obsessive-compulsive disorder. And getting gooned out on Ambien. Good news, people with broken hearts! Stalking of your ex on Facebook is totally normal. A study reveals that 88 percent of spurned lovers track their exes on Facebook, and 31 percent of respondents have changed their profile picture in an attempt to make their exes jealous. And it is good to know social media has brought out the responsible adult in all of us, isn't it? Please support my channel by sharing the Daily Dose of Weird News on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and other social networks. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. And click that little bell icon next to the subscribe button to be notified when I post new videos. You can find even more weird news that I didn't have time for at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. I'm Darren Marlar, and I'll see you next time, weirdos!